Because we cannot go out and collect things very easily, we've brought back about 800 pounds of rock from the moon, but in other cases we have not been able to go out and scoop up a piece of the sun or a piece of mercury or to sample the rings of Saturn or to uh, pick up a piece of star, we cannot easily tell what those things are made of. There's chemical analysis of the moon rocks, but to analyze what's out there, the only way to study it is through light. Light carries information about properties of objects out there in our solar system, although that's reflected sunlight, and uh, from the stars that they give off their own light. And the way that we do that is by making a spectrum. A spectrum is caused when sunlight passes through a, in this case, a glass prism. And that glass prism is so named because its sides are not parallel. It makes a triangle. Light passes through that and gets refracted or bent into uh, its colors. So white light, the, the mixture of all the colors comes into the prism and because the two sides of the prism are not parallel, the different colors pass through that prism differently. And the blue light comes out of the prism in a different place than the red light does. And so we get, we get a prism effect, or we get a spectrum. This is what is known as the visible spectrum. Uh, that is the part that is seen by our eyes, uh, and so is named the visible spectrum for uh, our eye sensitivity. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Indigo is a color in, in there between blue and violet. Uh, they tend to, together, spell out a name. Uh, Roy G. Biv, uh, that indicates the, the colors of the spectrum of light that we see. A rainbow occurs in a similar fa fashion, although not exactly. The raindrops are not prisms, and there's some reflection inside a rainbow, uh, the raindrop as well. But you get the same kind of effect uh, after a rainstorm or before a rainstorm, depending upon the, um, the time of day, where the sun is and where the storm is. You get a spectrum of light. Uh, you can see all the Roy G. Biff spectrum. That is, uh, that is there. So this is uh, a spectrum. A rainbow is a spectrum of light. And so when passing that light through that prism, we get those effects. Now, notice the manner in which we measure light is metric. Um, it's a nanometer. It's, very, it's a very small fraction of a meter. Uh, and we also use uh, a property of light or waves that we call wavelength. The, uh, a wave, whether it is a light wave or a wave on an ocean, a wave on a lake, uh, has properties. Uh, the top of the uh, wave is known as the crest. The bottom part of the wave is known as the trough, and the distance between two repetitions of the wave is referred to as a wavelength. So light has wavelengths. The distance between the wavelength is different for red, uh, different for blue. So there's different wavelengths. Wavelength refers to color. That's another term for that, and usually stated uh, in the metric terms. So the red light has a different wavelength from the blue light. Um, 700 nanometers for red, 400 nanometers for 
the blue light that passes through uh, a, a prism or when we, when we get a spectrum. Visible light, however, is only one form of wavelength, the part that we see starting all the way on the left side of this diagram. Uh, the longest wavelengths are radio wavelengths. Objects in the universe emit en energy and provide information in radio waves. Uh, a little bit shorter in wavelength, we have microwaves. Uh, some of those microwaves are what uh, your microwave oven produces to warm, to warm food. Um, infrared, infrared uh, wavelengths uh, are uh, where we can measure heat from out there, objects in our universe. The visible part of the spectrum, of course, is what our eye sees. Ultraviolet, as the wavelength gets shorter, it's beyond ultra, beyond violet, or extraviolet, uh, is even shorter wavelengths. Uh, this is what pr uh, provides a, a skin pigment change in the skin from the sun is from ultraviolet. Um, sunburn, suntan is from ultraviolet. Infrared is what you feel as heat, uh, it's infrared. X-rays, uh, that's the same type of X-ray that a doctor uses. I used to uh, do check for cavities in your teeth or uh, for the doctor by, for a broken bone. Uh, and gamma rays uh, are the shortest. Um, and notice on the wavelength chart, you can notice that the wavelengths are getting smaller and smaller, uh, the, the distance between the crests, and also to something called the frequency. The repetitions, how many repetitions or how many, how many crests pass by a certain location um, over a certain amount of time. So the frequency gets higher. So long wavelengths have short frequencies. Oh, I'm sorry, long wavelengths have long uh, frequen frequencies and short wavelengths have high frequencies. Uh, the... Um, the gamma rays and the X-rays are very harmful uh, to living organisms, and they can cause uh, uh, mutations and other uh, things that are not good for life. All of these, of course, travel at one speed, the speed of light. Uh, radio is a form of light. Microwave is a form of light. Um, sometimes it's called the electromagnetic spectrum is the common name for uh, all of this collection of energy uh, and it is and it is energy all of these wavelengths have energy related to them uh, gamma rays have very high energy because uh, they can penetrate uh, penetrate lots of things including human flesh radio waves uh, have very low energy and they uh, have almost no penetrating power um, the easily reflected on the other hand, gamma rays are not easily reflected. Uh, they go right through things rather than uh, reflecting from them. So all of this collection is known as the electromagnetic radiation. The spectrum is another name. It's another name for it. All of this is part uh, of energy that, that astronomers study. They, they have developed... They have developed telescopes, uh, such as radio telescopes or gamma ray telescopes, or the popular ones that you're aware of are the visible telescopes. Uh, and this is how we uh, try to find out information about what's out there. Now, not all of this radiation gets into the Earth's atmosphere. Luckily for us, the harmful stuff, most of it, the X-rays and the gamma rays, and a lot of the ultraviolet gets... Uh, re gets absorbed in the Earth's atmosphere. The, there's the Earth's uh, gases absorb that, in particular uh, ozone, uh, a form of oxygen, uh, absorbs some of that uh, energy. Uh, some of it gets through to the ground, but most of this has to, uh, most of this gets blocked. And so in order for us to observe uh, in the X-ray or the gamma ray, 
we have to use a, we have to use a telescope or a satellite that we put up in space. Uh, so visible light makes it to the ground. Uh, some of the ultraviolet makes it to the ground, and so we make ultraviolet telescopes too that that observe that part of the spectrum. Um, infrared, most of the infrared uh, is blocked by the Earth's atmosphere. And we can observe infrared either from high-flying airplanes that can only fly for a certain period of time, or we find a mountain someplace, and we put our telescope up on top of that mountain so it can uh, look at uh, the infrared part of the spectrum. Radio waves make it to the ground, um, and uh, visible light and some ultraviolet. So the other ones, we have to be a little creative uh, for us to... Um, in order for us to observe it. Um, in the 1600s, a Romer, this individual whose name I've underlined, was the first one to indicate that perhaps light uh, is not, does not move at an infinite speed. Perhaps it does have a, um, a value. It's not infinite, but very high. And he did this by noticing uh, Jupiter's moons. Uh, astronomers predicted Jupiter's, the, the uh, path of Jupiter's moons around the planet. In some cases, Jupiter's moons were used, uh, were used uh, as a chronometer. In other words, in order for someone to find their longitude on the Earth's surface, uh, it was important to have a, have a clock. And by looking at uh, Jupiter's moons through a small telescope, you could uh, use that as your chronometer or your clock to tell you how far away from home you were. Uh, so uh, he found out that when Jupiter was near the Earth, these predictions occurred at a different time than when the planet was farther away from Earth. So notice that when over here at opposition, when Jupiter's at opposition, the predicted times were different than from when they are over uh, when Jupiter's near conjunction. So he made this first calculation of the speed of light, and today we accept this speed of light at about 186,000 miles per second, which is also about 300,000 kilometers per second, or about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Romer was the first individual to, uh, to attempt this, to, to attempt this measurement. Uh, there, there has been some debate for quite, quite a long time as to uh, the nature of light. Uh, Isaac Newton thought that light, even though he uh, noticed that it was passing through uh, a prism to, to uh, give us uh, a spectrum, he thought it was made up of little tiny particles. And so there, Newton's particle theory of light uh, was also considered by Christian Huygens, and Huygens was able to demonstrate to us uh, that light uh, travels in waves, and also Thomas Young had some experiments to show that light acts like a wave, and so uh, it's the, the primary theory of light is that it is a wave, although in physics you might learn that it also sometimes acts like a particle. But for our purposes, um, it acts uh, very much like a wave. And the Young experiment, uh, Young's interference experiment, uh, quite, quite briefly what this is, is that when waves, uh, light waves, or in this case ocean waves, pass through a little opening, uh, these waves travel out and they begin to mix with each other. And when they mix with each other, the crests of the waves tend to add together and make the wave higher, and the troughs of the waves tend to subtract and make things darker. So by the time this ocean wave, that darker for light, or a, a lower trough uh, in the ocean, so we tend to get uh, some high waves uh, here uh, and... Uh, on a for light, this would show up as a very uh, bright spot of light where the waves tend to interfere. This is called interference. So these waves interfere with each other, 
and they cause very bright spots and very dark spots in light, uh, very much like this diagram shows over here with light coming through two openings, uh, we get interference. And so this is a demonstration. Young's, inter Young's uh, uh, interference experiment demonstrated that light uh, acts like a wave, and so we're going to treat it like a wave for us. Maxwell, just historically, was able to demonstrate that light has both electrical properties and magnetic properties. And so sometimes you hear the terminology electromagnetic radiation, uh, or you'll see the abbreviation EM uh, as back in one of the previous slides. So it's a, it's a combination of both electricity and magnetism uh, that form the wave nature of light. So light acts sometimes like a wave, uh, most of the time like a wave, sometimes like a particle. And these are significant in our study of astronomy because the wave nature of light, interference uh, of light, allows us to study the nature of light, whether it's a radio wave, microwave, gamma ray, x-ray, visible light, allows us to understand and observe and study the properties of stars, even though we cannot reach out and touch them, cannot pick them up, cannot go out and see a star, mainly because they're just too far away. But all of these different forms of electromagnetic radiation of light uh, allow us to study different properties of the stars. Radio waves give us some information. Infrared gives us some information. Ultraviolet gives us some information. But we have to use different kinds of telescopes to do that. Some of them on the ground, some of them on mountaintops, some of them in spacecraft in order for us to see, uh, uh, to, to learn about the properties of the stars. <laughs> 